outdoor event of the hacker community, the infrastructure review, all, all the numbers, all, all the facts on how much love, labor, passion, te tears, pain, energy, and, and so on, went into making this event even, even greater than the last one and even more, more awesome than anything I've seen before, to be honest. So please give a very, very, very loud applause to the MCH 2022 infrastructure team. Many, many thanks for the warm applause. It really helped us to forget the uh, last uh, 10 days for build up and keeping the power running. For all you have fun and have power. So I give you a, a review about first was planet. We make our power monitoring like CCC camp. And oh, we have some nice DMR stuff. We test it and then come uh, a lot of things that did not plan it. Some stuff not arrived. Uh, some stuff was missing. Some stuff was wrong. And yes, we had a plenty of things to do. So, first always, yeah, plants are always right. Also, this is one of our plants. Um, maybe it was working, then the cables too short, uh, things not here. So, we have switched over lines and we measure lines. Uh, okay, we get some wrong uh, resistance on it. We have to change to bigger cable. This just to happen uh, if you're in a field. And this is different from last time. So we had a different setup this time. Last time we have more generators mid in the field and we have planned first to use transformers from Leander, that's a, a local power company. And they say, so, oh, we have built up an, uh, um, a cloud computer center. We have no people to get you your transformer. And we switch to use uh, generators and we use the scouting infrastructure. This is built for scouts, so they normally hook up some, I think some cookers, maybe a warm water heater, something like this. And then we put on this network our power and put more cables on it, so we have about 150 cable linked after the cabinet from the scouting. So we never do this again, so that's not the right idea. So we had some issue with uh, current loop uh, resistance, so the unshort circuit, uh, circuit breaker will not drop properly. So I had to do a lot of things about this. So then find me some nice thing, like every time this is rental equipment, or you see on the right side, uh, this was a boat with a uh, speed limiter uh, with a CE plug. <laughs> Let's just make a picture of it, it's very nice. Here's a second uh, controller inside, and you have, inside you have more speed. Even this is rental stuff. No? Um, all stuff is tested from the rental company. Say, it's all tested, you can use it, it's fine. Uh, it's, no, it's not. This was also a nice device that we uh, collected. Um, there was some pizza oven with some problems with the heating element, so get some error current to ground, and they put this nice thing in. First thing is a 300 milliamp uh, LCD is not allowed. Uh, 32 amps are smaller connectors, have to be a 30 milliamp LCD. So I just put in a 300 milliamp, and it's very nice. In German, called this Klassische Nullung. So, so, so the main incoming earth ground is about the right device. You see, this is some uh, protection diode, about 50 volt. Okay, as the, as the voltage goes on the case from the enclosure, goes over 50 volts. Then this, uh, this short circuit to ground. Let's do this one time. And now it's an open circuit. People, if you bring stuff that's working not properly, just give us a call. Come to us. We will you help. We always help the Mecklenburgers to fix their stuff in every event that's normal. If you have a problem, we can try to fix it for you. Maybe we can try to get your parts for you. We will help you. If you have a, any problem with electrical equipment, come to us. We are not the bad guys. We will help you get stuff running and get it safe for all. For all. So don't do it, please. Even some, we collect some 
32 to 16 amps adapters and some other riot stuff, we just catch them and give them up back. <laughs> then other things, yes, we have very nice generators with, oh, a little bit smoke. So this the state what you get, some rental equipment. So this have to run in a little time. Or we have plans in the middle, you see a nice cabinet from scouting. It says there are some 63 and 32 uh, connectors inside. And we open it and say, oh, nothing inside. Oh, uh, maybe a sugar connector. Or nice connector, so isolation is uh, cut uh, on the cable, so you use a knife a bit. Please, if you have need assistance, come to us. We help you. If you have any problem, we fix it for you. So we go out of stuff, we get a second rental company, maybe we get some stuff more, this so is very helpful. We are running out on stuff on Monday and build up, so all was gone. And we get some nice cabinet, as you see on the right, with Belgian connectors. And so, oh, not all have this multi-plug with a hole inside. And we get this nice adapter too from Agreco. It's weird, but it's working. You have to switch over to CE. Normally, this shuku is not allowed, but you don't have the polarity with the neutral and the lifeline. But this one on a Belgian connector, you have this. You can plug in the wrong direction and then go back to shuku and it's working. The middle device that we found and this uh, was some measurement device on a 32 amp with no extra fuse, then open lines and into shuku. People, don't do it. This is, well, this will, don't do this fucking shit. Buy a fuse box, put three fuse in it, and no, no guys, not this way. Isolate tape. I don't know is is isolated DC voltage on the outside. Please don't do this shit. We will, well, our people will got home in very healthy state and died. People, There's nobody want to have this, and even as a child, we never can accuse it for us for ourselves. So. We are measurement every, every, every LCD on the field. We make it on CCC camp, we make it on Congress, and we do it now here. And there was some discussion about this, have you do it? Always we doing it. This was a lesson what you learned. You find always broken stuff. LCDs on the field. They tested as, as common on the, on the truck, as treasure, treasuring around the field before they be place it. Something get wrong. We test everything, we found broken devices, we replace them, and that's help all our self is safe. Some hackers bring weird stuff. Yes, we are a hacker camp, that is fine. So, but the LCD have to be working for all we have in the safe state. That is really, really important to check this. We do it this time, we make it always as help other people. And this is a nice thing to do. We found some weird things, this is about that you see on the, on the left uh, corner, this is a short current that we have, the 65 amps on the sugar line. And the, uh, the ticket breaker need a lot, a little um, amount of current to trip fast. If the loop indent goes too high, then that, uh, the breaker will only uh, bre uh, trip on the terminal, and this takes some time to, uh, to trip. So maybe you have a fire on it. That's we have some mass loop indents on long lines, that's we have to run thicker cables, and we can fix this from. This was on the lowest end what you can do. Even on the right side, you see we immerse earth current, uh, earth resistance on a generator or on the dike. This is okay, uh, but measurements and stuff will help us all. So then we come here and starting make power. Oh, our crack was set on the generator. But the generator does not hook up. OK, I go in and hook up the generator. This is small cables I see on the right. And we get some two errors. First one, say, warning over speed. OK. So the generator runs on 52.8 hertz. This is a lot. This is no problem for the most devices, except uh, USV from the POC team is now say, oh, this is not right. Oh, let me switch to battery, and then it's died. And this was this little switch, what you see, say um, uh, resistance load. And the generator tries to uh, um, regulate this against the resistance load, but you have to hook up external load. The switch was on, nobody knows this, but this was not the biggest issue what you have. The biggest issue what you have was that the generator here on the field on E0 was not 
bonded between neutral and ground. We start the measurement on the boxes that he delivered out and say, hey, we have a lot of, 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 of resistance. We cannot think we had about 10 kilo ohms uh, resistance. And the incoming network from Leander, from the power company, is a TT network. It has no bonding. It has a bonding in the, in the transformer, but not a local bonding at the power houses here. Then we talk to Agreco, and uh, they say, yes, you have to open the generator. We make some trem temporary fix with a coffee cup and a little bit of water. And then you see we have to bond. So this is uh, on the right picture. You see the, uh, the wires with a with with green mark. This have to hook to the neutral position. This was the only generator that had it. We measure every generator. Lesson learned. Measure every stuff. Don't trust anything. You don't know. Somebody can rent this before. Some guys do something on a generator. Everything. Try to measure it. So we have fixed this problem. Then we have a proper grounding and all the LCDs stripped correctly. That's what we need. Then we're starting to try get some monitoring. This was planet, same, we bring our power boxes. Yes, some guy had this near Frankfurt. Oh, we have an, uh, a truck, you can leave it, and then wow, the truck on 120% load, and we don't have them. So, and we had so much shit to build up uh, to get the monitoring running like we do it on, the, on the other events. So then we find this Agreco have a nice controller on it. Most uh, commercial big generators have the deep sea controller on it, just rebranded with Agreco. Oh, this has a mode both and Ethernet port. It's an 8,000 series controller, and it's very nice. If you register at uh, deep sea, just make an account there, you can download the software, and you get a 300 page uh, Modbus documentation with every command that you need. Oh, we try it on the first generator. Oh, we have to set up, and then something happens. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, there was a short out on A0, like here, as far a talk running, um, all people were very happy about this, so, oh, power off, I love it. Yes, this was a different style controller, we don't look exactly on it, and I think as far as the CAN bus, the generators talk aggressive with the CAN bus cable, it's just an XLR cable, so, and then we plug an Ethernet port in, and the generator says so, Oh no, just don't like it, switched off. The Gen 2 gets all the load and says, so, ooh, on the speed, and then just the motor gets turned off. The cousin had the load and then was a complete power output. Broken. The generator sends a postcard, this was not very happy about this. They say, so, oh, that's the route, wrong port, it really turned me off, and it goes off. Yes, you look on the back side, you see this nice computer logo on it that says port A10, and we say, okay, just plug and plug it, plug a network in, and that was our fault. Then we get our connections, we pick our phone on, uh, knock was very helpful, then there's some confirmation, we approach, okay, we have a uh, contract of phone on. Some cable issue in the uh, A0 building, then set up our pizza box uh, thing, patch Grafana, and yes, we get some data. This is the, uh, from E0, but only one generator. The second one is also only Modbus, so you need an, uh, an, an interface. And you see exactly uh, where the Macklin builder starts cooking. And you see nice in the, in the mid of the day, as they see the cooking phase, and it gets a little bit down, and then see when the dishwasher is running. And, it's, and this is only the half load. This is another one is a generator. You see current, see voltage. And another, and another generator was on the SUSE field, a small one on the camper. This do not a lot of work there, mostly the lightning there. But you get current, you get voltage, um, you get uh, your frequency, you get your temperature. And these controllers are really great, but you have to figure out which setup the generators have. They support a lot of different motors, things like this stuff. And yes. We get this uh, running, this is will, the next event we will do is we check out in the first how to communicate with the generators. You can commit, complete remote control it, you can see everything, you can do everything. And uh, yes, it will helpful to get events running and see problems in the first. We had some problems on the L01, some generator uh, goes off, then try to sync, and the syncing doesn't work. So there was some power outage about this. Um, yes, maybe a cracker have a little bit more quiet of it. 
So if you have this remote access, you can see every configuration, you can change the configuration and see problems. It's very nice. So, conclusion for our power this time. Never ever trust rented equipment, never. If the rental company is tested, test it again. If this say is grounded properly, measure it. That schedules for early delivery, so you have some time to react about this if stuff not coming right, so. And rent least at most 30% of equipment, so the plants never work, oh, I need somewhere, oh, we need somewhere, oh, we need some power more. This will help all people. And use more as one rental company. So if your rental company rents you some stuff, it's helpful you need more if you only have uh, some, yeah, can you deliver you don't rent funny fun. And plan more time for build up, troubleshooting, test time in your build up schedule. Seven days is really hard for this big power. So maybe start three days earlier and it's help everything. Gen sets, yes, we get a lot of starter. Next event, always told we have a good monitor on it. Shoot is a fixed problem to set up. Complete remote control. This will be fine. Some things about teardown, do not remove. Please, don't do it. Any of our connections, we will do it. There are some connections you can't tear, uh, pull them on load. We will do it, not do it. Please connect your stuff so early as possible. Make take only your stuff only and don't connect others, we have to pay where every cable is not here. So when you're late, we've here you tear down, you just disconnect our ca your cables and we let them sail. Huh? And please help us ask to get this event tear down, go to the uh, go to the heaven, be an angel. Many, many thanks for all people to get to help us on this time here to get this event running. It was very nice here. We had a lot of days we say, oh, shit out there, drive home at the end. It was a very nice event. Many, many thanks to all people to make this happen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. If you're interested on the talk from the Power Mountain last camp, the link is on the sheets. I will send you to the box, so we'll put it in. Many thanks. Next it. I think now knock is coming. Okay. Have a nice, well, warm welcome for the knock people. You gave us all the nice internet that you have. And I pass over to Nico Duck. Uh, yes. Uh, so, where's the. Uh, ah, he got. second microphone. Well, we can pass it. Or we can. Oh, yeah. uh, just yeah. pass it. Yeah, pass it. Hi. I think we'll just pass on the microphone. Give me a second to connect the laptop. Oh, only one at the moment. Yeah, would, would be easier, yeah. Hi, I'm Nico, this is Ayan. We are from the NOC. We are doing the NOC part of the infrastructure of UU. And there's also our second microphone. Thanks. That makes it easier. Test it. Oh. Testing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we'll jump right in uh, to the, uh, the network we've built uh, for you here. Uh, and this is uh, the uh, global uh, network topology of uh, what we've uh, built. Uh, this time we uh, actually have uh, two external locations where we have our um, edge routers for all the external connectivity. Uh, that is in the Smart DC in Rotterdam and the uh, NICAF in Amsterdam. Uh, so there we uh, pick up all of our uh, transit providers, internet exchanges, and from there on, we are um, using 100 uh, gigabit uh, DWDM waves uh, to get here onto the site. Uh, the next slide will explain a little bit more about um, how we're actually getting that to the site. 
And then um, here um, in Zeewolde, we have uh, two data center, quote unquote, data center locations. We call them E0 and L0. Those are the, the concrete buildings you see, uh, for example, yeah, like next to next to the NOC. Yeah, next to the NOC tent. And then uh, the, that's the E0 and L0 is the building uh, that's sort of integrated into the um, Scouting's Avonturehuis. Um, so there we, yeah, we have then those two routers also interconnected with uh, 100 gigabit, and from there on out we are downlinking uh, towards the, uh, well, the various data enclose we have on the site and the switches. And um, we have this time the opportunity to actually multi-home all the data enclose. So each data enclose has a two times 10 gig uplink. And it's also redundant. So if one router would fail or if there's a fiber cut, uh, the data enclose still has uh, connectivity. Uh, so for the for the long haul uplink um, to to actually get uh, the link from here on site uh, all the way to Amsterdam, we have um, a sort of complicated setup this uh, this time uh, because the the dark fiber uh, prices were very high to go direct from here in Zeewolde to Amsterdam. So um, we have a um, yeah, we have a two-part connection where we have a uh, rented the dark fiber from uh, Zeewolde to Almere. And from Almere, we have a uh, sponsored uh, DWM connection from, uh, from Surfnet, which is the Dutch uh, research uh, network. Uh, and uh, on this um, network, we're using a te te technology which is called an uh, alien wave. So we are essentially able to um, transmit a signal uh, on a specific frequency, which they then can, um, which Surfnet can plug into their network, and they will transport it from Almere back to uh, Amsterdam. And the nice thing about that is that the Surfnet DWM network is quite large, and they also have a backup path. So if they would have a fiber cut, say from uh, the direct path from uh, Almere to Amsterdam, they have a backup path via Hilversum, so that's quite nice. The, uh, yeah, the dark fiber from here to Almere, that is uh, just, um, yeah, that's a single connection, so if somebody would put uh, some, yeah, backhoe in the ground, then the fiber would be gone, so <laughs> luckily everything went well so far. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, and with this, we um, are yeah, we're transmitting a 200 gigabit uh, coherent DWM signal over this, and uh, we're then using the 200 gigabit um, connection to break it out to uh, 100 gigabit. Um, yeah, lastly, we also have a connection back to, uh, oh, we also have a connection back to Rotterdam, uh, that is also um, for on 100 gig, but those are uh, a sponsored connection. Uh, yeah, so for all for the for the internet part of the uplink, um, we are running our own AS again, which is uh, registered under Event Infra. We have a, uh, a request at the temp assignment from RIPE, so we have a slash 17 of IPv4 space, and also we have loaned a slash 19 IPv4 prefix from the CCC. Well, in terms of external connectivity, we have quite a bunch of um, transit and uh, peering connections. So we have, a few, we have a few of them in Rotterdam, and then we have a whole bunch of them in uh, Amsterdam. And uh, yeah, so we have a few of those connections running on 100 gig, and the others are running on uh, 10 gigabit. You want to take the next one? Yeah. Yeah. I just uh, <laughs> this is just, I would say, a list of all the hardware DB deployed on site. We had the two main core routers in the two concrete building E0 and L0, which are donated or loaned by Juniper. We also had some more Juniper devices from the Juniper loan. And besides that, we had a whole bunch of Arista switches and Aruba Wi-Fi access points deployed all over the site, in the Darton Close, in the track tents, at the bar, at some villages, to get a decent network coverage. All the optical stuff, like all the optics, are again loaned by Flex Optics, which was is, is always quite nice from them. We also had 
quite a lot of servers running on site to keep most of the data or all of the data needed to run it on site and not leak something out of the site. Yes. This is just some, some random pictures we took during the deployment. Uh, we had, uh, uh, you might have seen the knock tent, which was quite huge, which was also good to, to store all the stuff during deployment to do the assembling of the sticks you see for the Darton close. We had uh, saw them funny mounted Wi-Fi access point, which was upside down. This should not have been a bird feeder, so we put it up the, the right way again to stop water getting in. Uh, we did a brand new setup this time. The last time we used 10 gig bi eye optics to connect all the Darton close. And this time we thought, oh, we could do uh, some CWDM magic. So we had always four Darton clothes in a ring. We used 40G LR4 optics in the core router, which have four different wavelengths, so four different colors of light containing 10 gig each. And we broke out one of these colors in each Darton clo. So I would say one Darton clo was green, the other was blue, and then we got red and yellow. Of course, not these colors, but just to make it a bit easier. And we connected to them to both core routers. So one Darton Claw had an east connection on one wavelength and the west connection on the other wavelength. So there was a lot less fiber to deploy for this setup, which sped it up by quite a while since we had so many fiber already in the ground. The scouting site has some connection between the Beton, uh, the, the concrete buildings, E0 and L0, to the distribution cabinets you saw in the earlier talk, where the power comes out, they also have fiber connectivity in there. And we heavy, heavily used them to have backbone connectivity on site. We had our own, I would say, branded CWDM muxes from Tallgrass. Um, we had a sweatshop over there to assemble them ourselves to keep the cost a bit to a minimum, and they even have the laser engraved fiber squirrel, which is with us since Camp 15. Uh, of course, there was some Darton Cloak contamination again. It happens nearly to all the events, mostly during build-up. I have the feeling that um, it's mostly happening to Darton Cloak near some tents which are being set up. So I'm not totally sure if this is the right audience or if we should talk to the tent builders. But in case you come around someone picking a dart and claw during set uh, build up of the next event, please talk to them and make them stop contaminating them. It's always fun to come in and replace them on the last notice, but it would a bit more, be a bit more relaxing if we didn't have to. Someone also thought that it would be funny to put tamper-proof seals on the DKs. <laughs> it was kind of annoying, but I'm also thinking about if this would uh, help stop contamination during build-up, if we put the seals up on ourselves. But since someone's taking the effort to pick a lock, I'm not thinking that a temper-proof seal would make any difference here. Maybe we'll give it a try, maybe not. We'll see. Uh, we operated the three on-site data centers. The biggest one was the E0 building right next to the uh, NOC tent behind the two generators. We hosted equipment in there for basically all of the teams which wanted to have on-site equipment hosted. This was the phone operation center, the video team, the radio team with the on-site Motorola coverage was there, the sysadmin for stuff. Yep. And of course, our own systems like the DHCP server DNS automation was running on site. As these concrete buildings have quite thin walls, um, they became really hot during build up when we had over 40 degrees, around 40 degrees outside. The wall heated up to over 40 degrees and the ceiling too. So we had to put three air conditioning units in there to keep it to a usable level, which mostly shoved the, whole, uh, the hot air from the sun out. The systems didn't do so much. We also improved our netbox setup again. We've been using netbox for our network automation since Camp 19. Uh, we are 
expanding it constantly. We have great folks in the NOC team developing C3 G CFG to generate all the routing and switching config from Netbox. And this time we also used Netbox to have all the patched fiber uh, in there. Last time we used some spreadsheet for documentation. Now it was in Netbox too. We did the planning. Um, we even used our tools to calculate the fibers we needed. So we have this inventory of long fibers and we knew which fibers we would need on site and our tools helped calculating and picking the right fibers for the right job. And then we fed this data back to Netbox. We also used it again for device tracking, IPAM and all the stuff we probably had in our previous infrastructure reviews. Uh, so finally, some statistics uh, from the network we've run here. Um, we have been able to uh, push the uplink uh, on the sort of receive side. So what we receive on, on site that went up to uh, 50 gigabit. Uh, that's somewhere yesterday evening. And transmit was at the maximum of uh, 14 gigabit. Um, we had around uh, a peak of 2,800 uh, Wi-Fi clients uh, on the network. Uh, over the course of the five days, we've seen uh, around 8,500 uh, unique uh, clients. And for some reason, we've only seen about 1,000 badges on the network, so I'm not quite sure if that is the right number, but yeah. Uh, yeah, and this time we had the, the 10 gigabit copper connections available too in every data flow. Um, so what we've been able to collect in terms of data is that we've seen uh, around 25 connections actually running on 10 gigabit copper, so that's quite nice. Uh, lastly, there was also uh, one on-site internet exchange, which was uh, run especially for the event, which is the uh, MCH um, IXP. Yeah, um, lastly, so the, um, running a network uh, like this uh, cannot be done without uh, any uh, sponsors. So we have a quite <laughs> long list of uh, sponsors that are either um, sponsoring or loaning hardware uh, or um, yeah, giving connectivity. Uh, so the, yeah, the, I will go, go through the list, but it's uh, Junipers, which we use for the edge and core routers, Flex Optics for all the transceivers, Tallgrass, who helped with the, uh, all the muxes you have also seen, uh, i3d.net helped with co-location, the DWDM equipment, and uh, IP Transit, uh, Babil for uh, the servers, uh, Bit for uh, the UTP cables, all the blue ca UTP cables you have seen on site. Uh, event Infra uh, helped with the access network, so it's all the Aristas and all the Aruba access points. Uh, Surfnet su uh, supplied the, uh, the alien wave between uh, Almere and uh, Amsterdam. Uh, Core Backbone is IP transit provider, NTT uh, as well. Uh, NLEX um, sponsors an internet exchange port. Uh, A2B and Fusix and Wopcom all sponsored uh, IP transit connections. And lastly, I, uh, oh, I cross connect <laughs> in NICAF for the MCH Internet Exchange, sponsored by uh, AD Top. Yeah, we also had some fun during the event. Uh -huh. You all know most of the knock work is happening before and after the main event. so. We thought oh, it would be fun to have some spliced fiber necklaces there. It was a bit hard, as I heard, but it worked. <laughs> so, yeah, that's basically what we have. Thanks for attending. The main network will stay up until tomorrow. Today, we will only tear down the track tents, but basic Wi-Fi coverage will stay until tomorrow, something in the morning or midday. Thanks all.
Hello. So a quick couple of facts about the phones from the Phone Operations Center, this time brought to you by the Entropia, Karlsruhe, Westwood Labs, um, Chaos Vermittlung and some friends. Uh, yeah, what did we bring to this event? We uh, almost, uh, we have uh, almost the same setup as on SHA 2017. So we brought about 26 decked radio base stations, have uh, five fiber interconnected uh, PBXs on the field, which connect to all these decked antennas, uh, controlled by two redundant PBX controller VMs uh, with redundant IP connections. And also we do have uh, 20 something field phones distributed across the field, which are manually operated. Um, some statistic, so we do have many calls handled. We have about uh, 500 inbound as well as outbound calls to the public telephone network. Uh, Connectivity to that was uh, sponsored uh, from our friends at SpeakUp, which also sponsored Dalin at Dialout at SHA. So we have a total of about 45 hours of telephony to the public network, mostly to Germany, the Netherlands, Austria, Italy, and Belgium. Yeah, our deck network, some statistics. Uh, no numbers, just pictures. Um, you can see uh, an overview of uh, our SHA map with all the deployed base stations. Most of the traffic, of course, happened around the center of the area where the phone operation center and all the other OCs resides, but also distributed across the field. Uh, uh, um, coming to the availability, we had no time for downtime this year. Almost, we have like lost one antenna for about 10 minutes, but the rest is just a nice green graph. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Also, many thanks from our side go to all the angels who operated nearly 24 hours a day the switchboard PBX to uh, have all the field phones connected and uh, provide the ability for everyone to listen to the beloved waiting song Bonen in the Orn. <laughs> Yeah, uh, some tech facts, so um, one uh, slight change um, towards uh, SHA 2017 is that we have now a working auto-registration feature for our decked phones, so you don't need to come again anymore with your phones to the POC tent, but just uh, register them uh, yourselves. Uh, about 420 uh, people have done that, so uh, thank you for saving our angels many, many hours of manually registering decked phones, because that was a lot of work at the last event. <laughs> um, some uh, uh, novelty we also had this time was uh, a bit of optical transformation because we're using the uh, on-site uh, fiber network, which is mostly single mode fiber, and uh, we built some custom adapters to adapt to multi-mode fibers, which we have on our old telephony system to the single mode uh, on the uh, on-site. So uh, many thanks uh, go to our friend Fabian who helped designing and building these things. Also, if you want to check it out, you can go to uh, GitHub and visit the project there if you want to build some. SFP to SFP fiber adapters yourself. <laughs> Regarding teardown, the uh, phone network will probably be gone by the end of today or the beginning of tomorrow. So if you have any land decked headsets and chargers from us, please return them to the POC tent as uh, soon as you don't need them anymore. Um, preferably tomorrow noon at the latest so that we can pack everything up and, uh, and get off site as soon as everything is done. Thank you very much. So, um, yeah, we are a production house team, uh, mainly part of a couple of Dutch people plus uh, Vogue. 
And uh, these are our experiences of the last uh, two and a half years. Uh, we prepared the event by uh, starting with a Dutch uh, C3 Voc node in, um, in Amsterdam, together with uh, Event Infra and the NOC team. Um, and then uh, <clears throat> the logistics started to get all the hardware here, because uh, after the last two years, we had a lot of hardware dish, uh, all over Germany. And um, we plan to do some uh, conflict man management changes because uh, uh, maintenance was needed. So, build up. During build up, we had a lot of fun because uh, our logistic provider was once again quite unreliable. Um, pick up dates, they apparently don't know what they are. We haven't figured it out either because they gave us estimates and then picked it up a week later. Uh, we also don't know what drop-off dates are yet because our logistics provider hasn't been able to teach us that. Um, and in some cases, the shipment has been routed quite scenically. Uh, we had like a shipment going uh, from near Berlin uh, to Leipzig, uh, to Bad Homburg, and then to somewhere in the Netherlands. It was quite fun. Um, yeah. On the topic of contact management, we are starting, we have started the process of replacing our old and outdated uh, Ansible config management with uh, bundle wrap. Uh, our team data center has rewritten configs for all of the on site devices of C3VOC. So the encoders, the mixer laptops, um, the tally pies, and, the, uh, and our data center, uh, which required reinstalling all of the operating systems during the event. And we've done all that uh, within the last two weeks. Um, yeah, commit like there's no tomorrow. We've made a lot of changes, and this is just like a part of that commit lock. Um, we had around 100 commits or so at the, uh, like at the end of the event. Quite a lot of work. So um, during the event, we learned a few things. Apparently, these stands not, are not uh, waterproof, which means uh, the tarps and uh, that little tent over there. Um, we also learned that uh, long HDMI is uh, quite unreliable, especially with uh, 4K uh, uh, signals. And um, uh, because uh, the TVs are now almost all of them are 4K and uh, we're not. Um, one power outage, we think, killed an amplifier that, uh, uh, an amplifier controller that eight hours later decided to uh, uh, make a talk uh, really unpleasant. And uh, to fix that up, we uh, rem removed one um, talk to a different tent, but that tent was uh, closed. We couldn't use it anymore after the one o'clock and that the talk would uh, run uh, over that. So we, decided, we uh, invented the silent stage, which we'll show a picture of. And we had an unfortunate incident with a mute button during a talk on the first talk on a, on a more yesterday morning, which we uh, managed to uh, re-record uh, today. Oh, sorry, wrong button. So we built uh, a nice little tent to protect the equipment. So that's a, 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 a tent uh, squared or something. Uh, this is the silent stage. You see uh, a lot of people watching a, a, a bytecode uh, jam with uh, all connected with headphones. The tent itself is completely silent until you put the headphones up and you had uh, really uh, nice uh, music and uh, commentary on the competition going on. And we also had this uh, thing. Uh, apparently, um, we are now covering all the insides of our equipment with uh, MCH dust, which was already containing uh, Camp 19 dust, and also maybe SHA 2017 dust, so it's time to open the cases again and uh, clear them out. Yes, C3 Dust really did a lot of work. Who also did a lot of work were all of our angels. We need five angels per talk, plus an additional AV technician to be in the lecture hall at all times. That gives us around 660 shifts for the whole event. Um, we had to do three angel introductions because of people apparently arriving too late for the first two introductions. Um, and on a personal note, uh, we would really appreciate it if people uh, signed up for uh, their shifts at, in advance and not just like five minutes before the talk or showing up during the talk. Um, it's quite stressful for us to have the uh, angel system showing us a lot of angels missing for shifts and having to deal with that. And, 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 and uh, showing up on a stage and there's like 10 people because they all want to do a shift, but they all forgot to uh, sign up for it. Uh. 
please do better next time. <laughs> it saves us a lot of headache uh, during the night. So yeah, we also extended our VOC network. Normally, the VOC network just contains uh, our own infrastructure, like the uh, video mixer uh, and the uh, mixer laptops and all that. Um, this time, we extended it a bit. We also added the audio mixers uh, into the VOC network and configured them ourselves. Um, the in-room video mixing, which is what is used to switch between the info beamer and the slides on the monitors and the big screen behind me. Um, was also configured by us and put into the VOC network, and we have made sure to uh, save the configuration and everything, and uh, that will be possible to reuse at future events. Uh, it just allows a few comfort, comfort features, like uh, the AV technician no longer has to run to the front to switch the info beamer, but can just do it comfortably from the back on their laptop. Some, some statistics, we had 132 staged videos. Um, we have released almost all of them at this point. Uh, that's about 100 hours and 20 minutes of video. Um, in total, we had 118 angels, four Winkekatzen, two unicorns, and countless cuddles, because apparently we are not only the video operation center, but also the Flausch operation center. Uh, some, some colorful graphs. We've got statistics about when uh, the, the stream was watched the most and when it wasn't. Uh, very obviously, nobody watched the stream during the night. It's interesting, the baseline of people that left their TVs turned on, apparently. Um, can't say I have a problem with that. We had quite a nice pause music during the event. Um, yeah, and uh, to end, we would like to thank some people. Uh, we would like to thank uh, Spiker Sound, who built the... Uh everything you see. Uh, we especially like to thank uh, Holoplot, who supplied these magnificent um, loudspeaker systems, which can do much more than we sh were able to show you here. We especially would like to uh, thank the uh, angels that helped us, because uh, we can't do this ourselves. There's just 10 of us. 10 of us, roughly. Yeah. Uh, roughly, and uh, there's uh, hundreds of angels that helped us. and. Um, Personally, as production house, I would really like to thank all the, the people of uh, Seafree Vogue, who uh, always make this a really fun experience to do these events. And uh, we hope to see you soon on the next event. And lastly, thanks to all of you. If you weren't here to watch the talks, there would not be no reason for us to produce them. So thank you. Hello, I'm representing the Herald team, and um, you are nearly done. So the Herald team is a new team. Most of the people were not Heralds before, or at least not at Hacker events. We had uh, people from 15 to 77 heralding in Abacus and everywhere, so uh, I think this is quite awesome. Um, we covered three stages and one Herald desk um, with all these uh, 23 people. We had a talk coverage of all the talks that required a herald, which is all beside of something like um, lightning talks. Uh, this were 132. Uh, as some talks were repeated, we did some twice. And we also looked slightly into the workshop tents, and well, we also covered some of those that didn't need a herald. We had zero empty or late or missed shifts, which is awesome for this event. <laughs> we had an average team member, uh, uh, talks per team member was 5.73 whatever. So um, some did quite much. Some did not so much, but uh, had other things to um, manage, like children and stuff like this. So very thank you to all the heralds. Um, we had 181 herald shifts with these 23 heralds and a lot of back office things uh, additionally happening. So 
I'm used to speaking with talk cards <laughs> as a herald, <laughs> not as a presenter. So we had some other numbers. Um, we also had to monitor the CO2 levels in the tents, which stayed fine beside of the time when we had this jam session going on here, and we were actively blowing CO2 into the tent, and well, the number went crazy. But I think we could manage this. But we had to open up the tents for heat, because uh, it was quite hot in between. Um, I hope you yeah, wouldn't be happy. Yeah, I, I, mean, I hope it was okay. So um, we used 450 talk cards, or we went through 450 of these nice talk cards. Um, we ate two birthday cakes because one of our heralds had birthday and was then doing herald shifts, um, which is great, I think. And we lot, used a lot of water, sunscreen, and hats. Well, also Marta. Um we had 21 different announcements, even if you probably only remember two or three and sleep about them. So actually we had two complaints reaching us. The others probably were held up by the salt um, thingy uh, complaint booth or something. Uh, that, so the complaints were that we were repeating too much the same announcements. Uh, yes. <laughs> we earned four sets of parking and trash angel patches. If you want some, you still probably can get them by doing these shifts. You probably saw them all. Uh, but we got four sets because we were showing them to you. Well, we lost two sets. If you find some, please send them over to hardworking angels. Um, we had one speaker being hit by, an angel, uh, by a herald. Um, there was a mosquito or something, I was told. Yes, um, and we had one field telephone call. So somebody actually was using them. Great. Um, yes, then I have to tell you, drink more water. And now I can happily announce uh, the content team, I guess. There's some weird signs. Uh, the content team, uh, we usually don't get the content team, and we don't learn about all the back work uh, about the speakers and all of this. So here's the content team. You'll have to give me a minute while I unlock my laptop. Uh, hi, I'm from the speaker desk slash content team. We work quite closely with uh, Katazi from uh, Herald Coordination. Uh, we don't have Grafana, so I'm afraid there'll be no pretty, pretty graphs. But uh, we do have some statistics and fun things to share. So over the last, what, uh, four days, you have hopefully enjoyed uh, 233 sessions from 179 speakers. Uh, I just like to give a round of applause to everyone who did submit to our CFP. There were loads of awesome submissions. Unfortunately, we couldn't accept everything. Uh, but thank you to everyone who did submit, and particularly those that did present. Uh, if we could just give them a round of applause. So that was made up of 144 talks over these three stages, 61 workshops across more than three workshop tents, I think four or five, uh, 27 music performances over on the music stage, 4% by uh, our very own DJ in team content, uh, one film with subtitles, uh, a fire dragon, which was over there if you didn't see it, um, and loads and loads of village content, uh, some of which was in our official program, some of which wasn't. There was loads of awesome stuff happening on the train, and I hope you managed to see some of it. So, some other statistics. Uh, we had 1.5 mobile apps, a iPhone app, and an Android app that we never finished. I never finished. Uh, we did 25 schedule releases through Pretalks, which is the conference management system, over the, just during the, the four days that we have been here. Uh, we had, unfortunately, five COVID cancellations, speakers that couldn't make it, uh, they got COVID, uh, we, we feel bad for them, we hope they're okay. Uh, we did have a fridge this year, which was awesome. Uh, we also had a drag queen, which I understand was very popular. Um, 
And we lost track of how many passport stamps we gave out to people. Um, we also uh, had a load of uh, speaker stickers. They were gold and shiny, uh, like that. And they disappeared from our tent halfway through. So if you do know where they are, we would love to have them back, um, because we do have other speakers to give them to. So our Horeca order. Uh, this is important because we give the speakers free drinks when they come to us. Um, and we have managed to order, I don't know if this is the most that a team has ordered, I suspect probably not, um, but we have ordered that amount of stuff, quite a lot of mate, uh, which we have given out to our speakers. Uh, if you want drinks, please submit to the CFP next year. Um, and some less sensible statistics. Uh, we had two of our auger late to their talks, uh, which created one miffed herald. We had three talk reruns because of unfortunate AV issues. Uh, we had one water-related uh, power failure in our tent, uh, where it tripped the, uh, the breaker. And then, when it got really, really hot, um, it actually uh, heated up our thermal, thermal cutout and uh, tripped it again. Um, we had one pre-talks server migration. Thank you to, to Wilder for doing that, halfway through yesterday, I think. Um, as you can see on the back of our gator, we have a how am I driving uh, sticker. We had two suggestions on how we could improve our driving. <laughs> I don't know that, what that says about us. Um, we had one faulty bull's wagon, uh, which uh, destroyed a fiber, two fibers, I think, from Knock. We're really sorry. Um, and one broken like label printer thing. They cost 50 euros and it got really hot and, and melted in the machine. Um, and unfortunately, we have one talk that's over running, which is this one. It's the only one. Um, so I'm going to uh, quickly end this. Um, just some thank yous. So Producti House and the uh, VOC, um, they are awesome. They do a great job of streaming everything and going and fixing HDMI cables in workshops when they don't work. Uh, the Herald Desk and I, I'm, going, I'm going, I'm going. The Herald Desk and Katazi in particular, who has just organized everything with heralding. We haven't done anything. We printed cards, and that was it. Um, the ever-patient sysadmin, uh, Walter, who deals with pre-talks when it crashes every five minutes. Um, and our lightning talk coordinators, who have uh, coordinated all those who didn't submit to the CFP but still wanted to uh, have a chance to speak on stage. I understand there's some really good talks for that. They are recorded. You can watch them online. Um, and finally, uh, we have an angel that has literally sat in our tent for the entire weekend. Uh, so thank you to them in particular, and all of the other teams, all the angels that signed up for shifts, and in particular, PL, for supporting us in this event. So thank you. So as this was the only, no. First, first things first, thanks a lot to the, all the orga teams and all the angels and everyone who helped making this event as awesome and as it was, right? Please, a very warm applause for everyone.